Hey, this is Tracy Lewis with Stuff and Things. I want to go through an exercise with the watercolor pencils from Stampin' Up. I have not a lot of experience with watercolor pencils over other mediums. I have spent a lot more time in my past with watercolor paints. Spent years now with Copic markers and I have just decided I'm going to spend the time to learn to use colored pencils. I'm going to, for Stampin' Up, learn to use the Stampin' Up brand colored pencils. I have already spent quite a bit of time now, and I'm going to do a different video, on chalk pencils mixed with Stampin' Up pencils on dark cardstock that comes out really nice. And I do now, I've never owned nice colored pencils. The nicest pencils I've had are the Stampin' Up colored pencils. And I do now have the um, Faber-Castell two lines. Their, their colored pencils are called Albrecht Durer, who was a famous artist. And then their Polychromos colored pencils. I am going to be teaching myself those for other types of projects and probably won't be using them for Stampin' Up! projects as I want to use and get to know the Stampin' Up! line of products really well, which would be uh, way more reasonable cost-wise. Those other colored pencils, the Faber-Castells, are lots of money, and I decided to invest in them since I like to explore different mediums, but they are totally, in my opinion, unnecessary. But using them has helped me to figure out these Stampin' Up! colored pencils. So I have some other projects that I have done and then I want to walk through some projects with you. So what started all this was the paper pumpkin kit for this month, which is um, for February called Lovely Day. So I want to share, I went ahead and had a couple of projects that I put on my alternatives and said that I would come back and color them later. So I have now colored them and this is an example, of course, notice I got some black smudges, but I can clean this up. This is a, a beginning stamper type project, not colored. Here is another beginning stamper project, masculine, not colored, but inked with um, a stamp that comes with the set, this three layer cake stamp. And I did that. So that's what started it all. And then I plan to color this. I have explored, there's three different ways you can use colored pencils if they're the watercolor pencils. And that is to use them dry. And this is with the, this is balmy blue. It's a little on the dark side in my opinion. It looks to me darker than balmy blue. Kind of looks almost like a, a more of a middle blue. Okay, then you use them dry. Then you can dry them and then wet over the top, and I'll show this in a second. And then there's a third way that I have experimented with. Use them dry. They tend to be pretty light colored. Then you wet, and then that that comes up, you know, you get the color a little bit more intense. It, it then no longer looks like you have the pencil lines where this is totally dry. I think you can see the pencil lines pretty well. This is on Whisper White, the thin, which is a 65 pound, I believe. And then I'm very, very light. And what it does, this is a wax based pencil. And so what I don't like about it is it gets very shiny shinier so if you look at it in the light it gets shinier than the whisper white cardstock which actually is a very smooth finish so it already has a little bit of a, a a slick finish so to speak so that's the first way using totally dry and this is many layers and i will also tell you that the stampin up watercolor pencils erase and if you have a you can buy small erasers. I don't have a very small one. I think this is my smallest one, but I have one coming and I have 
where I've gone over. So I like that if I go over the lines, I can fix them. So I was able to clean this totally dry image up and remove all of my overlaps and to make my white edges really white. So that I do like, and I did not, didn't even know that. And I've had these Stampin' Up! colored pencils for uh, two years now, I think, just about two years. So it pays to spend time with your, your medias. So next is dry then wet. I just use the um, aqua marker, which is just a water-filled pen. Stampin' Up! has a good one. I think that's what this one is. And then I have a bunch of different sizes of them for my other pencils. So this, you just wet the medium and it becomes watercolor. Like I can do a line here and make it very faint. I can push the color around. I can dab the color. But once that color dries, it dries and looks like a watercolor. It no longer looks colored pencil at all. Okay, then my third, and I won't show you the finished product yet, it is the flower you just saw, is you take and you wet. I'm not, you can add by pushing, it has the words push, where you can add more water, but I like this over a an actual paint brush because I can not add any water at all. I just, this this seems to just add water, it stays wet. So we have this wet section, and now let's say I want to get some vivid balmy blue. So this is a technique, this tip technique, that I have used with my other colored pencils, and I thought I would try them with the Stampin' Up! colored pencils to try to get some nice bright blue. And I was really impressed with the brightness. So you can get the this bright of blue as the color of the pencil lead using the direct applicator to the pencil lead technique and then you can also end up doing some highlights and some shadows leaving the rest light and then this you have to clean in between colors if you have or not already used the aqua marker no, I just pushed to get water because now I need this to be cleaned. So now it's pretty clean. The other trick is to always keep a paper towel handy. I'll grab a chunk. So if I wanted to pick up some, if I want to lighten, the nice thing about watered color is you can keep using it. When it's finished being applied, it is not um, like color fast once it's been wet. I can go in here and wet this one corner and come through very carefully and pick it up and notice it lightens where I added water. So the nice thing is to a degree you can get something very vibrant and take some of the water away. Unlike other mediums like a Copic marker you can use the colorless blender somewhat to push the color away. But I was impressed with these colored pencils. When you're doing the wet application, you have a lot more, um, m you can do more work with them, I guess, before you can no longer work them. So with the, with the dry on the 65 pound Whisper White, I have not been able to do much with water. If you're going to use water, you're gonna have to work quickly and you only get one chance because it starts to um, ball up. Right now it feels really smooth. After you get it wet, it starts to peel up the paper and bubble and all sorts of things. So then there's watercolor paper. This is watercolor paper. It is smooth on one side. It is 140 pound. Stampin' Up's watercolor paper this year is the 100 pound, and I'm not sure if it's smooth on both sides or not, but it should it should work for projects that you want to get in there and do many layers. If you want to do lots of layering and get down to your darks, you need to use the 100 pound. I wouldn't really advise, though I know people have used the shimmer paper, I don't think that that can take much more than a couple of, of workings. 
and I wanted to use something that I was going to be able to work and work and work until I was finished with it. So the 100 pound watercolor paper is the way to go. So I'm going to show you, I started to work. I work petal by petal. I start with dry and then I do a wet application on that initial color. So I do it in three steps. I have a few petals already finished with the first layer and then I have this petal has been colored. I color very, oops, I do have some blue left. So that's, oh, this is because I did the, the example. So I'm finishing cleaning this now and I will have that little corner. We'll have a little bit of purple. So I just wet it. I want to get rid of the lines. That's kind of the step here. This is like a base color. Another thing you can do if you own blends is do your base color in the blends and go in. I, I'm not going to do that today, but I've seen many videos where you can use the blends. This, this particular exercise is for folks maybe who haven't had the money to invest in the blends and they only have the colored pencils because the colored pencils are very economical to buy and they last a very long time and do a lot of different types of looks. I've already shown you the light look here uh, that's with the pencil lines showing. This is the first and second step and what, you know, what the color is that you get. So you can see that you can get a dark to light. I'm going out to the edges that I'm taking some of the water that I didn't put any pencil around the edges and I'm pulling the water, which is now colored pink, up to the edge of the petals. So that's the first and second step. And then I am going to go ahead and show you I am using Rich Razzleberry for this, and this has been stamped using the Paper Pumpkin Kits Rococo Rose. Now, you're supposed to use Stazon ink when you want to use watercolor. And you can see that Rococo Rose is not a Stazon ink. It is a dye ink, which means it is affected by the water, but for the purposes of somebody who just has minimal materials, I still think that you can use a dye ink and you're, you're going to be okay. I'm going now with the third step, which is adding wet directly to the pencil ink itself, getting that pure, as much of the pure pigment as you can, and then I'm darkening the centers to a vibrant color. And then you do have to let things dry. It is never permanent. You can, when you go back in with water again, it will still lift up some of this really dark ink. So it's not like you only get one chance and you're done. So now I see some puddling of water and I'm going to show you what happens when you pick it up. So with my carefully folded paper towel, if I start to pick the water up, it lightens some. And I'm starting to get the watercolor look uh, that is, is very distinct. You know, when you see a watercolor, you look at it and you go, oh, that's a watercolor. So that is, is the look I am after with these pencils. By doing the wet application, I am accepting that it's going to look watercolory. You could certainly go very dark, the whole petal, and it would not look as watercolored. So I have a finished one. 
This is the wet on wet with the color on the brush applicator directly for the most intense color. And here is the finished one. Now this is on the rough side, which I don't prefer. In addition to the very vibrant colors that you get, I went ahead for fun and added Wink of Stella. I wanted to see, once it had dried, I wanted to see how much the Wink of Stella affected the paint, and it actually did not affect the paint at all, in fact. I was able to take the brush over the top and not have any of my color move. So this is what I think is the brightest you're going to get, the most in-depth colors. The leaves, I will tell you, are Granny Apple Green with Old Olive. The berries are Balmy Blue with a little bit of Night of Navy to tone down the bright of the blue. And then the flower, as I said, is uh, Rich Razzleberry. And the center is their yellow, which is Daffodil Delight, and the Pumpkin Pie. And what I like about these colored pencils is that they do, they're already color matched to the Stampin' Up! colors. You can go much lighter and much, uh, not much darker, I would say, but you can go lighter with the water. The more water you add and